Hello, welcome to another fast and fun video um, this week and it's Rich here and in this week's video I'm back doing some DIY maintenance um, and it's on the Clear 182. Um, so I drove it down into the village um, only a couple of days ago uh, and suddenly the engine management light um, started flashing and the car really sounded quite rough so I drove it back it's only about a mile got it back home and it sounds really really rough at idle um, so with the flashing light so I've done a bit of searching on YouTube um, and it appears that it's highly likely to be fuel injector um, so but to confirm that um, I'm going to plug in a OBD2 code reader so can plug into the CAN bus and have a look at the fault codes on the car. I haven't done it since I've had the Clear 182. Um, so we'll plug it in, I'll show you how to plug it in, have a look at the fault codes, see what's on there. Um, and I've had the car now since September of last year, so about eight, nine months. <coughs> um, let's plug in, let's see what we've got. Hopefully um, there'll be news that will indicate which of the... Um, fuel injectors it is if it is a fuel injector because there's a chance it could be a sensor or something as well uh first of all let me just start the car just to show you the symptoms of the car so there the car that's it idling away and you can see the engine management light in the bottom right hand corner flashing away the car just sounds look can you see it's just like missing when i when i fluff, flick the accelerator it really sounds quite rough and quite coarse. This is a, I've got a handheld device um, reader. Um, actually, it's a it's a VAG, uh, Volkswagen Audi Group, because um, that's what it was originally bought for. But um, it should pick up any 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 Campbell's uh, fault codes. Um, I think anybody that uses um, and owns a modern classic, especially cars from the sort of two thousands and from the noughties, um where they're a little bit more problematic potentially these are these are a godsend and even if you go with the cheapest chips plug in one that's and you use a phone app or it doesn't really make any difference it's it's the ability to read the faults and then be able to delete the fault codes as well um so because some of the fault codes won't actually appear as as warnings on the dash either um, because they're more for sort of on the maintenance side so it's always a good idea to to have an understanding of how your car's forming and it enable you to do some DIY type of maintenance and I'm far from a far from a car mechanic so but there's loads of YouTube videos there's loads of help and if you know what the fault code is that help on the internet might help you be able to fix it yourself and that all helps keep the cost down when you regard to maintaining these modern classic cars Right, let's plug it in and see how we get on. The reader comes with this connector cable. Um, so that end clearly goes into the actual reader itself. And then <clears throat> this end here is what plugs into the car. And for the Clear 182, it's actually down here under the ashtray. So hopefully, with a bit of luck, you just literally pull that out. And he says, it is down just down there so I'm just gonna fit that in and uh, and switch it on so once you once you've plugged it all in um, I'm just gonna turn you need the ignition on but not to start the car so I've just switched the ignition on and you can see the display here I've got some simple yes no and up and down buttons and that's as simple as it goes so um, having a look there it says yes to the menu so let's go onto the menu and then what we need to do is we'll go down to the OBD2 coat so it's linking to the vehicle see what it says from the CAN bus so linking up to vehicle Read codes, yes. So he's reading the codes. So P0304, cylinder four misfire detected. 
So that's great. So we've found that. That's one of one. So, uh, good. Uh, so I'll raise codes because that's it. So yes. Erase trouble codes. Are you sure? Yes. Erase done. So I'll, well, do we'll, go, we'll go online. I'll plug that code in online just to make sure, but with a cylinder misfire on four, and I think with the 182s, it's not um, cylinder four. They don't go numerically one, two, three, four. I think they're going reverse. So I think actually cylinder four is the one on the left hand side. But I'll check all that online, plug in that felt code online just to plug up. But to me, uh, a misfire, it sounds like there's a misfire because it sounds really lumpy. Um, and to me, that is reminiscent of a fuel injector. So yeah, I will be looking at getting a fuel injector. And for that, um, go online, do a bit of Googling, and hopefully you'll join me in a couple of days' time when I will be trying to fix the problem. Uh, <laughs> I hope. I'll catch you soon. I'll catch you shortly. So I went online, I think it's the fuel injectors, um, number four, which is actually this one, nearest the sort of driver's, driver's side. Um, but instead of just replacing the one, I bought all four. Um, and they were all here. And the reason I bought all four is because my, my logic is, if one's damaged due to age and use, I don't want to go to the trouble of fixing one and then two months later another one goes. So let's do all four together. Here they are, um, about £30, just over £30 each, genuine Renault ones from Rem Parts online. Um, and if you can see there, that's what they look like. Uh, so here goes replacing all four. Hopefully it's quite straightforward. I think the key for me is the engine not run for about 48 hours. So I'm hoping that although there'll be fuel in the line when I split it, there should be absolutely no pressure. So I'm only expecting a dribble of fuel to come out of the fuel line. Okay, first of all, four Allen key bolts to get the top plastic cover off the top of the engine. And then we can see what we're doing. So that's the plastic cover off. So the next thing to do is, this is the fuel rail here coming in. Um, and going underneath here. Oh, bugger. <laughs> oh, no! So I've just dropped both nuts down inside the engine bay. Oh no! Why did I do that for? So this is the fuel rail here, going along here. It looks to be held on by these two bolts, which look like another couple of 10mm bolts. And then if you can see down there, that's, the, that's one of the fuel injectors. That's number one, number two, number three, and then down, right down there is number four. So I'm hoping if I can get these bolts out here, disconnect the fuel line, and then see if I can get access and get these injectors changed. There's obviously going to be fuel in this fuel line, but I'm hoping it's not too bad. So, it certainly won't be under pressure. That's to be squeezed on either side, and then. Oh, oh yeah, monkey, yeah. That's the fuel line off. Actually, that was pretty good because there wasn't too much fuel in there. Obviously, the fuel rail's full, but that, that came off okay. Fuel line's disconnected. 
now we just need to undo the electrical plugs to each of the injectors. Well, I've now got three of them out, and the last one, number four, to go, which is a pig because it's right hard to get to. And I'll tell you something, this has been a real pain. Oh, you flipping monkey! Right, what a flipping job! That's it, it's done. Right, Woo. Carefully fed that out. Keep my finger over that. And there we have the fuel rail, four injectors, and it's all out. Right, so whip these off, four new ones back on, reverse. Hopefully, this will be easier putting back than it was getting them out. And yeah, flipping. Uh, I won't tell you how many minutes or flipping swearing that went on for me to get these out but you just got to persevere um, I did put a bit of WD 40 um, and left it for a few hours and then came back and uh, get your hand right on the injector don't try to pull from the fuel well get it on the injector bit of wiggling and eventually they've come okay let's get this changed and let's get it back installed Okay, um, that's all the new injectors on, all clipped in, all clips are pretty good. So now, thread it back in, push the injectors in, um, connect the fuel line, connect each of the four electrical sockets, and then put the bolts in, banking plate, cover, all good to go. Right, here we go, let's, get it, let's put it back together. Okay, so that's, that's it all back on. It actually went on about 10 times easier than getting it all off. Um, what I've got left to do is put the metal shroud here back on and obviously the engine cover as well. But before I do that, um, I also want to check to make sure there's no leak. So I'm not going to put the, the, the metal shroud on just yet. Um, and then I want to check all the injectors, make sure everything's running smooth and clean. And most importantly, the fault light's gone. So, let me go round. Now, one tip I've been told is because the car has not got any fuel, the worst thing you want to do is start the car with no fuel. So what I've been told to do is put the ignition in, the ignition, put it on so you get all the lights, And it primes everything, but I don't want to start the car. So it primes the fuel and then switch it off. And then switch it back on again. And this will just prime the fuel pump. So there'll still be air in the pipe, but less so. So I've done that a couple of times. And fingers crossed. Oh, here we go. Let's... If this, if this engine management light comes on, I'm going to scream. Okay, it's out of gear, three, two, one, here we go. Well, there's no engine light there at the moment, which is good. And it sounds already, at cold, it sounds good. 
so hopefully that's it fixed fuel injectors all four chains I can say now it, there's no lumpy idle that's running sweet as a bell I can already tell that fantastic news so literally two bolts to put that on four bolts to put that on and then we're all good to go with a red up here on it too hope you found it useful if you did please give me a thumbs up please subscribe and stay tuned because there'll be another video coming up very very soon